on the podcast okay and we have some quotes for you today for this uh, part the second part the first segment if you have not subscribed please make sure you do so okay this uh the cinema this motivated podcast a podcast podcast okay and um okay relationship between east who are starting here right now um i prepared some quotes trying to get them right now okay okay first segment second part okay we'll just have um six quotes right now before we open famous fruit drink so you see how it looks right now now let's go for the uh, um the quotes number one we have remember that the faith to move remember that the faith to move mountains always carries a peak the anonymous quote then the second we have is the longer we take to act on God's direction, the less clear it's like the second one. Let me read it again. The longer we take to act on God's direction, the less clear it becomes. Think about it. Just think it over to yourself. The third one we have is procrastination. Procrastination is a tool of the devil to hold us back and to more and to make us miss God's timing in our lives when you kill time you kill those callings god has placed within you six the first step to overcoming procrastination is to eliminate all the reasons and excuses for not taking immediate action let's go so that's all we have right now we're talking about the relationship between haste and success can um someone who is let's 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 who are going to go into that into the stuff okay so but for now let's um let's see what happens this is some um, soft drink it said work okay you can see the color okay white okay in appearance white in appearance taste nice okay so let's open it and see what happens it is going to explode Ah, upon opening and it's also fit for drinking that's why it's better than wine instead of drinking wine man order this one <laughs> you enjoy it so let's go you can watch from this screen there i believe you're seeing it right now i'm afraid this is gonna show that everything let's go wine <laughs> so you can see it's there okay and you can also drink it see it instead of buying wine why don't you buy a soft drink like this you can get from a normal can like this and just open it to enjoy the explosion while you taste it so i'm talking about i'm coming let me enjoy myself Done. Okay. Uh, oh, Patrick, please turn on your microphone. Your microphone is off. Turn it on. Yeah. So now, uh, um, so what we're going over right now, so the relationship between haste and and uh, and success. That's also get your pen right now. Get a book right now if you are there, so you learn. You are about to learn something that change your life. I could only show. I was watching it when um you end up I was, I was trying to watch the the show and it was very powerful i understood that two people can never think same thoughts they can be almost they can't think same thoughts your brain always approximates so if someone says something similar to what you are thinking your brain will round off or round up approximation this person is thinking what i'm thinking no two individuals can occupy same space at the same time that is also a proof. That was from the last, so the first, from the first part of the live stream, the first segment. It's on our channel. Please watch it. It's gonna change. It's gonna change things for you. The better you understand things and what these are thoughts, the things we possess, our hands. The better you understand the use of our hands, the use of our thoughts, the use of everything we have. The better your life. This is this is really life changing. Okay. 
to subscribe right now okay hit the subscribe button let's go so right now what is east patrick that's the first question right now what is east okay so for me this is actually just like i will explain it later this is you trying to eagerly do something with speed that is eagerly trying to carry out an action with speed or hurriedly trying to carry an, out an action that is the reason why you're trying to carry out an action is that for you it's a matter of urgency so i think for me the best explanation of this is a condition of urgently making it necessary to move or act fast okay urgently making it necessary for you to move or act fast so is haste a negative thing or is, is it a positive thing? Well, it depends on on the actions that you take. Again, haste is necessary for you. I think haste actually allows people to overcome procrastination. So again, if you are too, like if they put too much haste, sometimes your haste could lead to you being impatient. Mm -hmm. So again, haste without control is impatient. But if haste on its own is normal, haste with control is a good thing because it pulls you into action. That is, you have a particular task that you want to carry out. So that your haste will actually make you just overcome the procrastination of whatever is stopping you. Like just put you into action to actually carry out that thing. Else. So, so haste now with if haste, if you have haste and you have control over that, your haste is actually good. But without control, it's actually impatience and impatience can actually be bad if for some part in some particular situation like there yeah, are so some sometimes you time a re, enough time is actually required for some particular situation mm -hmm. but if you just push ahead without actually waiting it actually result in bad outcomes wow so untamed is on on uh, controlled uh is, is is what leads to impatience okay so we call we should call impatience and that's actually good. So according to what you said, you said if it can be controlled, then um then it's actually a good thing. It's actually something positive. But if it's not controlled, then it should transfigure it into um impatience. And that can actually screw things up for any individual. So now any individual. So now um can haste be controlled? And if it is can be controlled, what are some helpful tips that could help? Because according to what you said, you said it can help right so now it like if it can be teamed if it can be controlled so now the question now is now if how can we control is number one is ace controllable number one then number two is how can it control what are some helpful tips you have that could help um the average individual control um is or haste okay so first of all i need to hey haste again can be controlled but for you to control it, you need to be conscious about whatever you are trying to do. Like if you are trying to carry out an action, you need to know, like you need to have a perfect understanding of what you are trying to do, so that you know the uh, particular amount of the speed or how hasteful you should be in trying to carry out that action. So again, you need to know what you are trying to solve or what you are trying to do before you can actually say, okay, how fast should I move or how, how well should I move? Because if you don't know, you could actually just rushing or you could be too slow to actually carry do anything so you need to know what the requirements of that particular thing that you're trying to solve before you now decide whether you should actually move quickly or move slowly or if the particular requirements will determine the speed with which you move to solve it then to actually again to actually these tips to actually control your haste is still the same as i explained before speed that is required for to solve a particular problem but sometimes for you for for you to actually control your haste or for you to actually utilize haste properly you need to look at the situation at hand if it's for me you need to look at like if you have a list of tasks or a list of things to do you need to look at the importance of them that is like your scale of preference or so, so which one can be solved easily so the ones that come first that are very important and can be solved easily, I think you should be you should just strike do those ones and then just 
strike them out of your list once you can just do those ones you have already started overcoming procrastination the reason why most people put off things continuously is because they feel like it will require too much time or like the requirements will be too much so they just keep putting in putting it off and off and off and off and off, and off until probably they, they just forget about it but if you are hasty about some particular thing that is you know which particular thing is important and when like have deadlines if you know okay this thing is supposed to be done by this time or even if there's no deadline you, you see that okay i can actually do this thing very easily without wasting much time or without putting it off you can just get right into it so again for you to control like for you to put your haste under control you need to be purposeful at this you need to be conscious of what you are actually doing then you need to actually skill like you need to order all your actions like by importance and by requirement you'll start hitting out striking out all the smaller ones little by little before you know by the time it gets to the bigger task it will, it will be nothing Okay, that's a brilliant one. So, people watch it right now. Sometimes, uh, we tend to consider haste as a bad thing. But, like, what you really say, like, consider what you want to do right now. Because it's just like um, um, a sprinter wants to run. Uh, if you have to consider the distance and you, what you really want. As a sprinter, you want to get the gold, right? And that would determine how fast you go, right? That would determine how fast you prepare yourself to go. So now, people watching right now, honestly, haste is not all negative, it's not all bad, okay? Haste, if controlled, is actually something good. It can help you get things done, okay? But at the same time, if not controlled, it can lead to impatience. So now, how can we, yeah, okay, if not controlled, can lead to impatience, okay? That's something you should understand if you are watching right now. So now, but we are going to go into something again, but from what you said, but let's just stay in this direction. Now, what is um success in your own terms? Because the topic, what we're dealing with is the relationship between haste and success. We've got to what haste is. Haste is if not this haste that is not controlled is called impatience, and impatience is all negative. Okay, so now the question now is now what is success right now in your own terms? For me, success is an event or like success is when somebody has achieved their intended purpose in a particular in a particular situation or in a particular area. Uh, like let me go into it. Let me go more into it in detail. So when you are successful, I think again, success still also stems from your mind. So basically, when you are trying to solve a particular problem or you are trying to do a particular thing. So when you have accomplished your purpose in that place, we can call it success. But again, some people could not exactly, some people, they don't, some, most times we don't exactly need to accomplish our intended purposes sometimes to still be deemed successful because, again, success is based on how our mind reads the results that we get from that particular thing that we were trying to solve. So success is just simply achieving in your intended purpose or a particular intended purpose in the particular field and again your success will also be determined by how your mind reads that particular results that you get back because if you notice some things like sometimes you you will find that okay probably we're trying to solve a particular problem yeah. you have not solved the particular problem or you fail to solve the problem but you still find yourself like happy Mm -hmm. uh, like you find yourself happy with the results that you get so in a way success is not just really about the like the physical things that you get it's also about how you choose to interpret what you get like choose to interpret the results that you get okay choose to interpret the results that you get now i want to i want to i want to get it the right now choose to interpret the results that you get sometimes you try something and you read the result is of is obvious to you that like you failed. How are you gonna do that? Should you accept it or should you think um it's over again? That is the question right now. And wait, if you yes, let's put let's let's should I say let's 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 assume a person is in a situation right now, he tries something and it in failed obviously. Now should that person, what's your advice to that person? Should that person accept the fact that, like, 
right that i failed <laughs> or the person should think it over again and try to read that failure in a different way to himself which one will be preferable should the person accept or read okay. it again the, the, the thing is the person did not feel exactly like again one thing that you need to know failure is situational that is not something that just exists totally or lingers on towards the in the entire life of a person or particular thing it's just situational you can always equate as long as you're alive you can always try again so again it's not just like when i mean like based on how you interpret it i mean like most you are trying to do something and the particular thing fails for example yes you have not succeeded though, but that does not mean that you have also failed so again you can always try again until you achieve your intended purpose from the start so when i meant like how you choose to interpret it so if you interpret that particular failure as you, like that particular situation that has failed you interpret it as the failure of your whole purpose then it means yes you have failed but if you achieve that but like if you perceive that particular failure as let's say it's a small step is or probably a small obstacle towards your intended purpose then yes you can still you can still be on the path of success but if you just see like i like i'm i'm trying to get the perfect analogy mm. but but i think you you understand what i mean now. yeah well, once you feel once you feel in a particular that does not mean like you are filled in everything or that everything will continue to feel. that particular failure is mm. just situational failure that just happened at that moment for one particular thing so, but like, I understand. But, well, once, you're, once, you're trying to, once you're trying to create something mm. failure must happen yeah if, the reason why failure must happen is that there's not every situation that works for not every solution yeah. that works for every problem yeah. so if you just take one particular solution mm. as general failure that this particular problem cannot be solved then yes you have attained failure <laughs> like you have filled yourself <laughs> with everything but if you just take that okay this particular solution did not work let me move on and try again then yes you are still on the path to success so so somebody that have for me to my advice is somebody that i've failed in the other places that don't just stop keep going you just found one particular solution that did not work and definitely you are still going to stumble upon more that will not work in the future so if you have uh, solutions you have then you cannot pick you cannot start to actually see the ones that will actually work to solve that particular problem that you have okay that's a brilliant solution okay now let's go over right now i want to like there are bad so there are some bad practices that we have actually developed in our lives mental bad mental practices and and that have actually shaped things, shaped us the wrong way. And we're going to talk about some bad practices that we have, should I say, follow, that we follow, or we have, we followed, or that we humans follow, and actually affects us, okay, in a great way. But you are going to talk about the bad practices, but I just want to give an example right now of what I'm talking about. For instance, now, from the podcast, the first uh, part of the f- uh, first segment, you said something that... Two people cannot be thinking the same thoughts in any way. Why? Because they are not in the same space time. Okay? They are not in the same space at that same at that same time. Every object you see today in our present day world occupy a particular space at a particular time. Always, always, always. The what you say right now is like it is really, really unlikely for two people to be thinking the same thing. The picture you have about this stuff, when another person I, it's very really surprising that this picture is different. Could be different, like, but 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 the person, for instance, formulas right now e is equals to mc squared. But the person is saying same thing as I'm saying e equals mc squared. The person is also saying e equals mc squared. But now, how can we tell the difference? How can we say that the other person is not thinking, cannot be thinking same thoughts as I'm thinking, but the person can say same thing that I can say? So that's really really something that. Really makes it all confusing. That makes it confusing. But from the show, like I don't get a clear picture that two people can never think same thoughts. It can be almost similar. The brain approximates. 
the brain will tell you because the person is saying the same thing, meaning the person is reading your mind, the person is inside your mind, the person is uh, his eyes watching your mind, this and that. Now, what, there are some bad practices that, that actually made it seem that way. And some of them are, for instance, something happens, they will tell you, put yourself in that person's shoes. So you, you put your experience, everything. Uh, you put yourself, your past, your experience, everything. You not put yourself in the person's shoes. And you not react for the person. You not see how you react for the person. Listen, I think those mental practices, those things we do, I think those are the things that have actually affected us, affected us to the point that we now think that when we think it thought, the other person is trying to think in it. Um, a minute, please. We shall connect again. So folks, just take a night here. This is famous fruit drink, okay? That is it. So you can see the drink right now. You can see the color. We're very close to it. We're going to work on the system very soon so that you can get a full picture of it. Let's go, folks. Hit the subscribe button. If you don't subscribe, I won't be happy with you, please. Hit the subscribe button, okay? So now, like I was saying, uh, yeah, there are some bad practices, okay? For instance, they tell you put yourself in someone's shoes. Someone did something that they say, put yourself in that person's shoes. Like what you say, that we all are, should I say, you know, just say unique or, should I say unique or, <coughs> that's from the past, that's from the, um, the first part of the first segment. Okay, we streamed live some, some, um, some hours ago. So you can check our channel right now to watch that first stream, still on this show, still on this podcast. Okay, now, so. We talked about the idea of our thoughts being different and we not thinking same thing as the other person is. But we sometimes think that hey, there's someone in the universe that's thinking same thing thinking right now. It's totally wrong, totally false. Why is it like why is it so real to us that the other person might be thinking same thing? Because of bad mental practices. You putting yourself in someone's shoes. You will not put yourself in your person's shoes in your mind, then you will not react for the person. Think like that if you keep doing that, you are going to believe one day when they tell you, Hey, you this person is thinking the same thought as you are thinking, you are going to believe it is true. Why? Because probably this bad, bad mental practices sometimes enhance the likelihood that you might easily think that, Okay, I'm thinking for the other person, and the other person can be thinking for me. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say right now. So, bad mental practices or bad practices sometimes can really, really destroy our lives, can actually make life. Make life uh, feel feel useless to us. Okay? Now, Patrick, can you tell us some bad mental practices that we exhibit that you know is killing the world or killing society? You can speak from Nigeria or you can speak worldwide. Um, let me see. Let me look for a very, very critical one. As you think, let me just display. This is famous fruit drink, okay? You can order your can, okay? I'm gonna prepare it for you. We're not yet selling it, but uh, I, I appreciate those who actually watch it. There are a lot of people watching this can, this fruit drink, and getting attention even on our other channels, customer market department channel, my private channel. Like, it's really getting views, okay? I appreciate those individuals who are actually viewing it on short feeds. And also through YouTube search. This is really, really fantastic. Famous free drink can explode when you open it. It's better than wine. So subscribe. Let's go. So, Patrick, let's continue. Okay. So, I think some of the bad mental, the most important bad mental practices. Yeah. Uh, how would I put it? The feeling of imposter syndrome. syndrome. Mm -hmm. So, imposter syndrome is like is a situation in which an individual doubt themselves that they are not capable mm. of actually doing anything that they are not qualified to do something so i think this is the most crippling <laughs> mental practice that many, exactly. many people face where let's say we see an opportunity yeah. or we we look at something and we see that there might be an opportunity mm. somewhere but we don't try to actually take advantage of that opportunity because we feel that okay probably we are not worthy or we are not prepared enough or we are we, we like we are not at that level or we are not supposed to take advantage of that opportunity opportunity because we are not qualified i think that is still that is the most crippling mental uh, bad practice that lots of that a lot of people actually face that a lot of people actually go through 
Okay. The reason why it's tricky is because most people never start. That's why most people never take risks because they feel like they, they have not even begun. They have already failed <laughs> in their mind. So I think that imposter syndrome that is, is the most is the worst by a mental uh, practice that that is actually dealing with society. So most people, the thing is that most people they could try to take on more risks. They could try to actually mm. improve. The, like we could have a lot of people could actually get better things that they could do. They could learn new skills, try new things. But before they start, their mind is already telling them that mm-hmm. they won't because uh, the problem man is saying uh, you are not qualified enough. You don't have the complete set of skills. You don't know everything to start. You don't know. You don't have everything to do this. You don't have like your mind is always telling you that you are not enough to actually do something so for me imposter syndrome that is the this is the most crippling bad uh, mental practice that a lot of people actually do okay so it's a very very bad one this is not i think it's worldwide speaking from the worldwide angle right everywhere okay um it's everywhere okay it's everywhere most of my subscribers are from the us that's the reason i streamed live and i talked to you guys about the time for you to watch the live stream because we are five, you guys are five hours behind us, okay? So uh, you have up to four time zones. Uh, P, I think MT, um, this and that, ET, this and that. Okay, I understand your time zones now, okay? I got that from Fox News, I think yesterday. So I understand your time zone. Even those in the UK too, I understand your time zone. So whenever I was streaming live right now, I'll put the time there, the correct time there. The correct time um, is already on the live stream. I corrected it, and uh, I did. I I only put the um, ET zone already before um, for the live stream. But now I now included uh, TPT, MT, and other ones there. So very very cool right now. We can still be connected, okay? So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let's go! All Nigerian man, subscribe to my channel. Most of my subscribers are. Uh, those from the UK and USA, Philippines, Brazil. Alright, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you subscribe and smash the like button, okay? Makes us happy. So now, the relationship between East and so it's, uh, and so said, that's what we're talking about right now. So Patrick, you talked about this. It's not imposter syndromes and that like people doubting themselves before they ever take action, uh, this and that. So it makes them never to to do anything right now so i have a question from you from what you said you said if like, the question is this right now what if i don't have time to correct my thoughts thoughts correcting my attitude because that is an attitude right it's a mental attitude right now so now what is your advice that's first part the second part is what's attitude and how is it formed how is physical attitude formed and how is mental attitude formed So basically, you <laughs> correcting your thoughts is not something that you really like. It's not something that you really just need to stop everything. You don't really need to stop doing everything. You actually begin to correct your thoughts because again, you, most times you could be busy and you could still be thinking. So correcting your thoughts is something like that you need to, to be conscious of. So before you actually do the best way to get rid of imposter syndrome is to actually start and to actually learn more about what you are trying to do. If you notice, there are sometimes when you want to solve a particular problem, and they say you know almost nothing about the problem. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be this crippling doubt at the back of your mind telling that, okay, you can't solve it. But the thing is that our minds are telling, what our minds really telling us is that we don't know enough about what we are trying to solve. And it's okay not to know. It's okay to try to learn, but most people they just feel like when they face a particular situation, they should have the complete set of mm. knowledge required to deal with that problem. But it's, mm. but it's not always going to be like that. It's, again, most of the things that are out of our control, there are many variables to, to, to everything. So it is okay not to know. It is okay to want to learn. Most people, they don't just... Most people feel like when they see other people not learning, they feel like, okay, probably it's because of pride that they feel that they know too much. The reason why most people don't learn is that they feel like they don't know anything and probably they will never learn. So it's not just pride that stops people from learning. It's still this doubt that, okay, they might never be able to learn. So again, to actually to overcome this imposter syndrome is for you to actually be conscious of, like, once you feel like there's something telling you that, okay, 
you you are not good enough so they actually try to confront those thoughts in your head if you say that okay you are trying to be a because again if you want to be a doctor you know there is a process like there are many things that you need to learn yeah. so again if there's something telling you that okay you will never be a doctor ask yourself why <laughs> like confront that thought in your head confront it immediately why <laughs> if you can try to confront it and try to get an answer from from your own self again then then you can begin to say okay if i don't know this thing i will actually learn it then i try i will i can actually overcome it but most people they just simply stop at okay they just simply want they just get that thought that okay you don't actually know this thing they just mm. they just simply become crippled all of a sudden without actually mm. trying to take an action as to actually overcome that thing so the only way to actually overcome imposter syndrome is through action by learning and by doing like also acknowledging the fact that again we are not all knowing being there are many things that we are definitely never going to know there are things that we are not going to know that and we are required to learn so once you know that what you have this understanding that you are it is always okay to learn new things that you must not actually go into every particular situation with a whole set of knowledge then you can actually be open to learning and be opening we open to trying new experience and we open to doing new things okay that's 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 a good one and uh, i believe uh that's very powerful like i said the movie i i i we don't talk about bruno no no that's the movie okay and come to colombian movie we don't talk about bruno very 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 interesting go watch it right now watch it so your mindset changes about life and what we can do if they ask those people hey can you produce movies a movie like that i believe they would say they would have said no immediately i believe so but they started I believe when they were starting, they did not. They might not have the complete uh, vision of the movie the way it came out. They might not have that complete vision. But as they started, they decided to adjust, modify, modify the vision, modify the idea. The series of modifications attached to the original idea. I believe this what came out as that movie, Bruno. It's a popular uh, movie. Like so, so powerful. Storyline, fantastic. The design, sweet. Ah man, so enjoy it. I can't man. You enjoy it. It's so so good, so so good. Like when you watch that movie, you know humans can do shit. Like you know humans are powerful. These phones you see today were once like unrealized possibilities in the minds of man. At first, at first, if you ask yourself, can can we have phones like this, something like this, you will never believe. But it's we now have it. To me, that's this we have not even done that we can do. But they're just stored up in us, just like potential energy, stored energy. There's so a lot of things that we can do, but we, like they're just stored up in us. So how do you tell you bring those things out? Like what we're seeing right now are the steps and the things that will help you bring all these stored things, stored gifts, stored potential, stored energy, stored power out of us. It's very, very important. Okay. So now and uh, we have other questions right now. Now, right now, Patrick, we have um, other we might send the live stream right now, very, very soon. But we still have a lot of questions here. Okay, now, the question is right now, is life real? And why is success the most desired thing to all human beings? Why is success something we all desire? And that first, you have the, you have defined success, all uh, right? My personal definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy idea. You have an idea that you progressively go for the idea that is success the progressive realization of a worthy idea is success okay now now why is this success right now um, a desired thing to all human beings if you, you can cling on to my definition you can but why is success generally desired i think success is really like a yearning that is how I put it, like an appetite for where we want to be. That is, success is just simply our minds trying to, like, trying to reach a particular place of where it wants to be. Like, where everything will be perfect or everything. Will be. So, in a way, success is like a projection of our mind where it wants to be. That, I think that is why people 
because there's no there's no way like if a lot of people were in very 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 good situations their minds will not really want to again forward but again our minds will always want to look up to our minds are always searching for better places to be so so our minds are that, that is where success comes into play so success is now when like we get to or we get close to where our mind wants okay we're gonna continue right now sorry for the um cuts Okay, we got to give Patrick a call again. So that is it right now. You can see this drink. This is famous drink. We want to see it's really well. I know camera mirror is gonna make it upside down, so you can see it's really well. Okay, very fantastic one. You're gonna explode it for open this one right now. It's a new one. It's a new one. Okay, folks, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Patrick is taking time to reply. I don't know why. Oh my goodness. Now uh, for the um for the next show we're gonna be talking about programming. We're gonna talk about programming and uh and other things. Programming and uh, and different um and other um, things. I think we will give more information in the um in the offline show about what we are going to talk about i really think so that's what we're going to do that's what that's exactly what we're going to do fine so we're going to talk about what we're going to do next okay and um that's it i think uh, patrick is busy we want to come on again so we'll continue the topic or discussing the relationship between haste and um, success. Okay, that's what we want to talk about. That's what we're talking about. I'm make sure you check the description for the sponsors of this um, of this show right now. Make sure you check the description for the sponsors. And um, if this was really helpful to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. Okay, that's all. That's all. We still have more questions, more things to talk about for the relationship between East and success. So we actually live better lives. Okay, that's it. Let's go. Let's get back to him. I think network is interfering right now. Okay, big network issues. Okay, we're back again. Like, this is a motivated guy. Like, we are motivated and dedicated individuals. Okay, dedicated dudes. So, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. You can share this video to a friend. Okay, and uh, so that person learns. If you don't learn, uh, you, you get ready to sink. Okay, yeah, get ready to sink. So, now. And um, mm, okay, Patrick, are you there? You said now. Now we continue. Yes. Okay, now. Yes. Yeah, let's go right now with this. Now, I have a question from what you were saying right now. I have a question from what you said before everything cut off. Now, the brain exaggerates, right? It approximates all the time. So how do we cope with this fact that the brain approximates or exaggerates all the time? Then uh, how do we cope with this fact if we don't have time with for our own thoughts? 
there are there are some other things we can do that will just help without us because many people the greatest uh um um thing ever they can do is for them to sit down and think and to just watch their thoughts many people don't have don't do such things so now do you have any other way for people like that then if there are no way else then what is the standard way you have for us to actually help our brain because if you have bad a, a bad mental practice will produce a bad brain a bad brain will produce a bad life okay so now how do we enhance our brain okay and our brain that's that's a question right now in another form so right now you can go ahead right now if the brain is actually raised, so how do we cope with this fact if we don't have time for our own thoughts so, yeah. that's of that form of understanding uh, is a bias where your brain is simply trying to use what it learned from the past to make sense of what is happening in the present. So it's called a like an implicit bias. The only way to actually overcome that thing is to be conscious, like to not just act simply based on what you know, but like you need to wait, like you need to view the particular situation that is happening now, then like try to get a better understanding of what is happening before you act. I mean that is you need to be conscious of like your actions. That is the only way that you can actually get rid of those form of implicit biases. So what about people who are not conscious of their actions? Like <laughs> there is there is literally no. no other way to actually solve it. You just need you need to be conscious of what is happening before you can actually have a uh, act with okay. you need to try to like from you it means most people they just simply act without like they act without any they just fire straight into action like next for those people before they actually go into action they just need to stop view the whole situation like just get on that that is the only way there's no and there's no shortcut or there's no way around it you need to be conscious to actually get rid of all those particular biases that your brain is actually reading off okay so if i if i see myself all perfect i will stop to make changes so i do take some limited pictures of myself sometimes so as to act like a downward force that will deliver some momentum to me from thrust. Thrust is an upward force, okay? Um, from jet um, engines, uh, the gas from jet engines, right? So now, let's talk about this right now. For you to watch it, so me, I usually, um, this is something I've read, I wrote down yesterday, right? Like, would you advise people to follow something like this? Like to think of yourselves as perfect or imperfect. Like there are some individuals that if there are some points, okay, let's assume Mr. E, let's just assume I myself, okay? I just assume this is for me. I would like if I see myself sometimes as a perfect individual, I've achieved everything, okay? And uh, there are some there are some points you start from you know hey, I you've not achieved, it will be obvious. Why there are some points you will get to as you proceed like it look like okay to look okay okay we can see this looks like the intended results like when you get to points like that what should you do for you to keep moving forward that's what i'm seeing right now i say sometimes i do take the limited picture sometimes probably something that happened i'll take the negative side of it sometimes so that i can push myself to take action or so what do you what else do you have if you are not supporting what i'm saying right now then that is just what i'm asking when you get to that point where you are close to your intended okay. goal, yeah. what do you do to push yourself forward, to keep pushing yourself like, forward? For me, the, the only thing I can use to push yourself forward is that no matter how good things are, always know that there's always room for improvement. Like, there are always things that could be made better, like the efficiencies could be improved. Like, there is always ways to make improvements. So, yeah, so you it could be there's again there is no such thing as perfection. There's good enough and there's always room for better than that good enough. So no matter the position that you find yourself, always know that there's always room for improvement. I think that that is an important thing. Because if you notice with 
take some of all these particular products that we use every day, like phones. Yeah, many years ago, or let's say decades before they were invented, people never thought of something that or the best one that was made, people were like, okay, this thing is really, really like it blew their minds. See, after that, second generation, third generation of the products, fourth generation, fifth generation, if you notice that things that you wear that like let's say you bought a particular phone five years ago. You at that point in time, compared to the phones before then, you will say that that latest one that you had was perfect. But you will, if you notice that the one that they released the next year or the one that they just released this year, if you actually use it, you will have areas that you did not even think of before. Like those areas were improved on. So no matter how good or how perfect something may seem, always know that there's always room for improvement. If you always leave that room for improvement open, you will always see that okay, you can always go further. Okay. So knowing that there's always room for improvement to or um would it really help it will make you not have uh, not uh not uh, not um you you will not um have to you will not have to look um take a limited picture uh, like just knowing that there's always room for improvement okay the phones the phones you are using today at one point were the best like to you were the best but the people there gave room for improvement and you saw a better one right so that is just what he is trying to say knowing that there's room for improvement and it's also good enough so when you attain that good enough you also know that there's room for improvement. So that's what it said right now. And that's really, really, really powerful. So Patrick, I have another question for you right now. Can haste make one successful? Yes. That is, if you haste, uh, like, I think there's this thing that goes, uh, make haste while the tongue shines. Yeah. So haste can actually make a person successful. Like, haste, there are some opportunities that are, time limited that is there's a particular time in which you must actually take carry out actions if you want to take advantage of those opportunities so yes now will actually help you to actually take a because we are too slow you might actually miss out on them so yes yes is successful. there are some actions that must happen at particular times for you to for you to actually gain the food food to success so yes, haste is very, very, I think it's a very crucial part of actually being successful. Okay, that's really powerful. Haste can make one successful. Well, I believe there was, there was a website, okay, I think VFly. They were giving out free views like, last year. A channel just, she, the guy just exposed the website in the last part of this video. He just did it casually. And I just picked on it like, I, try, I just tried it out. Like 3,000 views, I got it, bam! I signed up with another phone. I verified my phone number. Like, same or with same phone, I used another Gmail. Like, it also delivered one thousand views. Like, same one. I did another one. The same one thousand views again. Like, I just used. I just. I, I took actions immediately, and I created a course on that. I had to get five thousand views. That was the first YouTube course I came up with, and I also delivered. I am um, the first student who took that course got up to seven thousand views. Just imagine I delay. That was what even led to this business you're seeing right now. That first success, that first thing was what led, it's what has um, emerged into something like this now, it's today. So Ace is also powerful too. Uh, I think Ace is different from impatience. Ace is unco uncontrolled Ace will lead to impatience, right? It is impatience that leads to mistakes, not haste per se. Okay, so let's get that clear right now. So Patrick, for the last time right now, I'm going to work going off right now is this right now. What if someone's subconscious reactions, your automatic response to things will shape your destiny and your life? Now, what if someone automatic responses or someone automatic reactions or behaviors are actually heading in the dumb direction? What do you advise someone to do? Because those automatic reactions are something that are, are things that are out of your control. So what would you advise someone like that have these um, subconscious programs that are actually dead? Uh, that I listen to, um, yeah, I like those subconscious reactions yeah. are simply based on the implicit bias. Again, yeah. the only way to actually overcome them or to confront them is with by you being conscious and not just simply acting without first getting a perfect understanding of what is happening. And that is like, I, I think it's still the same thing. You just need to put your implicit bias control you need to control 
your response is knowing that what you like without a, a like if you don't have a validation of what you were thinking don't act i think that is the only way to actually stop all those uh, resources okay that's a brilliant one so if you don't have time for yourself as you're watching right now you see that success entails you having time for yourself you need to have time for your thoughts you need to have time for your intended reaction intended um, goal and everything that's really really powerful so Patrick, what five what three books do you have to recommend to everyone right now i recommend um the Dy dynamic thoughts uh the law of vibrant energy by william walker atkinson so what are the books you have three books you recommend to people right now before we call it quits okay i'll start with uh, from this book from simon sinek start with why how great leaders inspire to, uh, everyone to take action and next one that i will uh, recommend is zero to one by peter thiel then the third one that i will recommend is the hard thing about hard things by ben horowitz Okay, that's really powerful. That's really powerful. And uh, zero to one by um, um, we call the author name again. And that's 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 the one I really I really want. That's really that's one I really want to get. Um, start with why by Simon Snake. I have read that one already. I've gotten that one already. And uh, start with why. Me, what's trying to say is get that book. That book is also powerful. Start with why it teaches you that um, like people buy a why. Okay, people buy your why in business. People don't buy your products, like people buy your why. And Simon Sinek also talked about the like expensive versus cheap goods. Which one people prefer? He said he said according to what he said in the book, like the prices like don't actually affect like that. So what is actually very important is your why. That's what um uh, Simon Sinek said in that book. I've read that book, but you know, that one I really want to read is zero to one. By it's not Peter C, right? Peter T L T H I E L T H I zero to one by Peter T L. Okay, Peter T L. Okay, thanks a lot, Patrick. This is what we have for the first, yeah. the second um part of the first stream. We are going over to the offline part right now. You will see that those videos, the offline show, we're going to discuss. I think understanding the science of the universe, how to create a better future if you're in Nigeria, blah, 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 blah. those are just what I want to talk about. You will see those videos, I think, in uh, 48 hours or 72 hours. That's when you see those videos. So just play around these ones right now and enjoy yourself. Goodbye. So, Patrick, um, I'll call.